In this Jasmine workshop exercise, we'll be looking at connecting to Jasmine. Our scenario is this. I want to connect to Jasmine from my own computer to do some work. And our objectives are stated here. By the end of this exercise, I'll be able to connect to a Jasmine login server using a simple terminal client, a graphical desktop client. I'll be able to locate my home directory make an onward connection to a scientific analysis or SCI server, run a simple command, and run a command with some graphical output. This diagram shows us how the Jasmine services are laid out. And the top layer um, with the boxes in yellow shows the login and NX login servers, which are the ones we'll be making our initial connection to. We can make onward connections to SCI servers in the interactive compute, or indeed in a managed tenancy. In this case, we'll be connecting to one of the shared SI servers in the interactive compute area. There are some resources which we'll need for this exercise. First one being a Jasmine account with an SSH public key already uploaded and the Jasmine login privilege already granted. That's something you'll need to do via the Jasmine accounts portal. Um, and if you're using your own account, you will need to sort that out for yourself before attempting this exercise. If you're doing it as part of um, one of the uh, in-person workshops that we run from time to time, there are some training accounts which have these things set up for you. But if you're using your own account, you will need to set those things up. You'll also need access to the login servers that we're trying to connect to. There's a list here but it's always worth just checking the uh, documentation at the link given um, to check what the current list is. Similarly, the NX login servers are named as well. And the, the documentation link is provided there and that should be your source of um, information and advice on lots of things to cover how to do tasks within Jasmine. For local resources, you need to have first completed exercise zero, which helps set up your local machine with everything you need to connect to Jasmine. So that includes your SSH client application and includes loading your SSH key with the credentials for that particular Jasmine account um, and uh, covers checking that your network connection uh, matches the requirements or what to do if it doesn't. So this is the outline of our task. It's in three sections. This is the first section, and we're going to connect to a login server using a terminal client. So the steps involved in this, this is just an outline for now. You need to go away and do this task, and then we'll review in the next video um, about the recommended way to do it. You need to initiate an SSH connection to one of the login servers. When you've logged in, you can note the list of available SI servers to make an onward connection to. You can also check what directory you're in, helping to locate your home directory. You can also check what your current usage of your home directory is. And before you make that onward connection, you can ensure that your SSH key is available to you in that session to make that connection to avoid any problems um, from there on. The second step will be to repeat the login process, but using the No Machine Enterprise client. And this will allow us to um, start a graphical desktop um, on one of the NX login servers. So first of all, you'll need to make a connection profile for one of the NX login servers. You need to, make a, um, you need to connect using that profile to that server. Once you're logged in, you can repeat the step of checking that your SSH key is available to make an onward connection. And you can also bring up the list of available SI servers um, before you decide which one to connect to. You can then make the onward connection to a SI server. So we're gonna, as part of that, log into the SI server. We'll run a simple command, and we'll also run a command which produces some graphical output and hopefully see that displayed. When you've finished working through the task, there's some extra questions here which you can test yourself with, um, if necessary, referring to the help documentation. The same questions are in the notes, so you can just uh, ask yourself the questions when you've finished working through the exercise. We'll go through the solutions to these in the next video. So what next? 
You can now try out the tasks in this exercise yourself and it's best to follow along with the notes provided as there you'll find any links that you need to follow. You can decide whether to try and work it out for yourself or whether to follow through the step-by-step -step instructions provided in the cheat sheet. You've also got the self-test questions which you can ask yourself if you want to. In the second video, we'll work through uh, the same method as provided in the cheat sheet. We'll also look at any alternatives and best practice and we'll provide the solutions to the self-test questions. If you need any further information, you can find this at the links below.